Stuart, most scientists would believe that consciousness is reducible to lower level activities, whether it's in the neuron or down to the level of chemistry or, or physics, that it is a either an emergent property or even just a product of simple computation, depends on, on, on how materialistic the, uh, the scientist is. Uh, your view is, is different, uh, basing it on quantum mechanics. So from your position, is consciousness an ultimate fact? Yes. Uh Every quantum collapse, uh, which is occurring all the time, everywhere, in this bench, in the air, uh, where a particle or some entity is in superposition and reaches a threshold and collapses to one or the other, is associated with or produces or is identical to uh, a moment of, of consciousness in a very simple proto-conscious way. If you organize those collapses in, in an informed uh, cognitive architecture, like in a microtubule, a group of microtubules, then you can get rich, a complex conscious experience, which is meaningful. Okay, let, let's look at the ultimate level because quantum mechanics is how the the structure of reality is at its at its deepest, most fundamental level. Uh, at least that's how we feel today, uh, and uh, there's no question that that is uh, bedrock. Um, and what you're saying is that uh, uh, consciousness is uh, intimately intertwined with that with all quantum mechanical effects, is that right? Yes. Um, first of all, what exactly is a superposition? I mean, a, a quantum uh, state reduction means that something is in superposition and is in two states or places at the same time. Now, uh, the multiple worlds uh, view would say that that's a separation in the universe at a basic level, a Planck scale geometry, a separation, and each possibility branches off to form a whole new universe. Roger Penrose says that these separations are unstable and after time t will collapse to one or the other. And when that occurs, there's a moment, a quantum, if you will, of consciousness or proto-consciousness emitted. And if you take these simple events and orchestrate them as can occur in microtubules in the brain, you have rich, full conscious experience. Uh, but at the, at the ultimate, uh, irrespective of whether you can build uh, a, a human level consciousness, I'm interested in, in, in that proto-consciousness because that indicates uh, how how deep you can go in in, uh, in in understanding the components of consciousness, but you're you're saying that you can't you can't tease apart consciousness. You can't pull it into pieces because it it, it is not it is not um, it is not a complex structure. It doesn't have parts. Well, I think these simple proto-conscious events uh, can be somewhat independent of each other. No, no, I'm talking about the I'm talking about the, the basic unit of consciousness. Because if you have a big consciousness like, like we have, it has to be the combination of a lot of these. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it's more like a different frequency. You know, it's kind of like music if you move uh, along uh, scales. So uh, uh, the, the simple events would be her very high frequency, but, but random without meaning. But if you have an organized system like occurs in microtubules, it can occur at different frequencies. And, the, and the, the higher the frequency, the more intense the conscious experience. Like an ultraviolet photon is more intense than an infrared or has more energy. And I think consciousness occurs at different scales in the microtubules in the brain. And the higher the frequency, the more intense the experience, it can actually move up and down. In fact, I think music is probably a better metaphor, at least, for consciousness than is computation. Mm -hmm. Certainly there's computation going on, but that's not the essential feature. I think, it's, I think music is even better. But, but you still, at its ultimate level, when you have your basic unit of consciousness, it is a unit of consciousness, which is this collapse as you're talking about. It's not a unit of something else like a unit of a, of, of a neuronal spike or some, some circuitry going on. The ultimate unit of consciousness, granted you have to build up a lot together, but the ultimate unit is, is non-divisible into some other kind of thing. Right, and that's why we have a unity of conscious experience. That's why uh, we have the binding situation, the binding problem, which is solved by, by quantum coherence. binding problem being I, I, I have a, a sound, sights, so feelings, everything else, and it, to me it looks like a, 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 right. a, a coherent picture. Right, I, sensory inputs are processed different times, different places in the brain, and, that, and yet they're unified in a conscious experience. So, all, you know, uh, the different things come in at different times in different parts of the brain, and yet we have one unified conscious experience, and that's how it can occur by, being, by quantum coherence and entanglement.